one of the quickest and most effective fixes you can make for a photograph is to correctly apply its black and white points. White points ensure that you are maximizing the dynamic range of your photograph. But what the effing hell is that, Andy? Dynamic range, everyone talks about it. Think of it like music. When you stick a pair of headphones on, you're trying them out in the local shop, and you're thinking, oh my God, this is really, I can't hear any of the high end of this song, or where's the bass in these bloody headphones? Even like a bit of duff duff music like me, light has the same kind of parameters, dynamic range of light. And unless you fix the black and white points, you're missing out on all that lovely duff duff bass, and those lovely little highs as well. Fixing the old black and white point makes your image look more finished. You get purer blacks and cleaner whites. It gets rid of that kind of washed out look you get in some photographs. It can fix the overexposed highlights and it can sort out those muddy shadows too. And in this case, I'm gonna show you how to fix your black and white point using DxO Photo Lab 8. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Here's our test image, and as you can see, it's looking a little bit washed out, a little bit hazy. Could certainly benefit from a bit of contrast. And we can do that by compressing the dynamic range with the white and black points. And the first way we're going to do that is using nothing more than the exposure slider and the black slider. So first thing we need to do is look at the histogram. And we can see that there is this spare space here at the top end of the dynamic range and also some room at the bottom end where we can stretch out the histogram and reclaim some of that dynamic range. Now, before I get into this quickly, I want to say that also whilst we're looking at the histogram, this is a kind of technical approach, just trust your instincts too as well. There's no hard or fast rules really. If it starts looking wonky, and stop and dial back the slider. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the exposure. Look at the histogram and we can see that we've moved everything right. But there's a problem. Look at the peak. We're now out of range here. So I need to bring that back very slightly. I think about 30 will get us there. So you can see the peak is now in range. We've still got some space here, but that's okay because it's a very well exposed photo. So that's the white point sorted. Now we can do black. So I'm going to come down to the back slider and watch the histogram and watch the contrast on the image come back in because we are beautifully increasing that dynamic range. Now I've got my alerts on, my highlight and my shadow clipping alerts with these two little icons, the moon and the sun here. And as I can do that, you can see I've got these alerts down in the graphs here that we've gone too far. So we could bring that back if we want, there's nothing wrong with having total black in your image. Nine, to nine times out of ten, it's just an artistic response, and you can decide yourself if you like it. And I'm going to say I'm happy for that to be slightly out of range, because there's not a lot going on down there, and it looks really nice. So then, once you've done your white and black point, you can then come in and tweak the highlights and the mid-tones and adjust things like the micro-contrast, as you desire. Method two for fixing the white and black points using Photolab 8 is to use our old friend, the tone curve. So I'll just enable my tone curve here. And we've got the dynamic range of our photograph here echoing, of course, what's going on in the histogram here, which I flicked over instantly to no minutes. We can put that back on RGB if you like. And the way to use the black and point in a black and white point on the curves tool is to drag these two little reticles. That's the white point. Here's the black point. Just drag them in. So I'm going to start with the white point. Just going to move that in. I don't think I'm going to have to come in far for the same reason that we didn't have to greatly increase the exposure in the previous shot because it's already pretty well exposed. And also we do not want to affect that peak. 
So that's as far as I'm going to go on that one. 242. I'm going to grab this little triangle here and bring in the black point. I think we can go a little bit further with this one before we start to go out of range. And again, as I said, I'm happy for there to be some complete black in this. Doesn't hurt. So there we come in to 15. And I'll turn off the warnings so I can see what's going on. And that is how easy it is to use the black and white point. And then the same drill. Come in, fix up your highlights, your midtones, your shadows. Bang on a bit of micro contrast, whatever you need to do to further enhance your photograph. For this last shot, you may have noticed I've changed images. I wanted something with wider dynamic range to better showcase this one. And we're going to use a tool that's unique to DxO Photo Lab, which is the Smart Lighting Slider. This will perform a selective dynamic range compression on the image. It's going to analyze the local contrast and luminance distribution around some selected spot areas that we're going to pick out. And it's going to really create a nicely condensed image. So in the Smart Lighting tool here, I'm going to click on Spot Weighted. I'm going to click on the little spot weight tool here. And what we're going to do is we're going to select those areas of the image which are brightest and darkest. We're just going to draw a little box around them. So I would say somewhere around there was probably the lightest. And where's darkest? Somewhere down in here, I think, on the edge of this. So we've selected our two points. And now what we're going to do is move the smart lighting slider and it's going to preserve the local contrast for us and uh, compress the dynamic range to fit the two highs and lows so let's move that in and as you can see it's bringing up that shadow area here the histograms looking great and we are protecting the highlights. We're not getting blown out there. If you keep an eye on the histogram on the left there, you can see what's going on. Let's take it back so you can watch again. We're compressing the light range and getting a beautiful image. And because we've told the tool where the brightest and the darkest points are, it knows what to work with to better compress that dynamic range. So it's as simple as that. And then, of course, you can come in and do exactly the same. Highlight, shadow, mid-tone, and micro-contrast changes as you see fit. So that then, guys, is how you fix the black and white points in DxO Photo Lab. You can, of course, apply these same techniques to pretty much any photo editor. They all usually have black and white point stylus, although they're sometimes named slightly differently. And they won't, of course, have DxO Smart Lighting tab that's unique to that particular product. If you got value from this video, then do please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video and drone related content from me. Until the next time, guys. Ta-ta!